So I am here. This is with Astrophysics, who is an all in the USA manufactured, designed, everything down, just about down to the screws, right? Yeah, everything actually we do ourselves, yes. And you guys make your own glass. Yes. Uh, so now tell me a little bit about the calibration of like, because you probably calibrate every single cell individually to make sure each glass is lined up. And yeah, well, we don't we don't talk too much about the specifics of our telescopes. We make all our own telescopes. Um, you know, Roland is a master optician. We've been doing this, I think this is our 50th anniversary. So part of the reason we have these 70 threads is because, you know, it's the 50th anniversary. So we wanted to give some homage to that. But Roland's been making these telescopes by hand all this time. And uh, the latest versions of this, you can see this big giant one behind me, is the 190. It's a 190 millimeter F6 and the design is called a CS, which is a Christian Super Acromat. So a Super Acromat is the, is the fourth level, or the highest level of, um, of correction, and it deals with spherochromatism. So you kind of start out where you've got the doublets, you've got the acromats, and then you've got the apos, mm -hmm. and then, then you have the Super Acromat. So this is a really an extraordinary design. This 190 has kind of got a companion telescope over here, which is the 155 we just announced also uh, today, this morning. Okay. And that is also an F6, but obviously it's a 155 millimeter uh, size as opposed to the 190. Now they are F6 natively, right? Natively F6, yeah. So normally you're not gonna see a telescope at this speed for this kind of aperture, right? For this uh, focal yeah. length. So it's, it's uh, incredibly uh, well corrected. Uh, they come with a flattener. Um, and they actually, the image circle is really, it can accommodate up to a medium format uh, image circle. So 60 millimeters, at least on the 190, 64 millimeters, which is the larger 150 megapixel on the 155. I know with the, uh, with the, with the faster f ratio being negative, it, it makes that tube a lot shorter, which, which is yeah. quite, is, this is kind of imposing looking, <laughs> because it's yeah. big and it's round, it's almost like a Newtonian in diameter, well, we but just length. Talking, we yeah. were just talking about, there's another 180 that's not too far from us in a different vendor's booth, but it's, this is actually much shorter uh, than that one there. Yeah, so it's the, it's the faster speed and everything, it really makes it a nice, compact, fairly lightweight design. Do you also make a focal reducer to even go faster than that? So for the 155, we do have a focal reducer, or at least it's planned, uh, at f4.8, so it's about a 0.8x uh, reducer. No focal reducer planned for this. This is really kind of a, if you're going to buy this kind of telescope, you're going to want to use it. It's, it is optimized as an imaging platform. Okay. So with the flatten areas, that's what you're going to want to be using it for. But probably big sensors are going on this thing anyway, so. I, I would hope so. I mean, you know, you don't really want to take something like this and just kind of take a, stick a tiny sensor on it. But like I said, we've, we've, we've made it so the image circle is absolutely fabulous, out to 60 millimeter uh, diagonal. So that's, you're talking 100 megapixel medium format. A lot of people are sort of getting around to the, the full frame, you know, uh, 35 format, which is fine. It's a little bit smaller than that. but. You know, you've got room to grow with these, and they're really going to be absolutely spectacular for that kind of image. It would probably be almost an insult to attach a, a cell phone adopter or something like this. <laughs> you know, and whatever, whatever gets people out in imaging or just observing, you know, that, I think it's fantastic. Like all the little, uh, you know, sea stars and things like that, I think it's great because there's so many more people that are getting involved in this. And they will get enthusiastic and passionate and want to work their way up to something like this. And that's great, too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> you want to talk about this mount at all, or you just want to talk about telescopes? I do want to hear about that mount. <laughs> okay. Because I'm a machinist, so I, I machine big stuff like that. Oh, great. And I, I can appreciate, like, I mean, I'm just looking at this thing, I was like, oh, this is, the machining's done well. <laughs> yeah, so we do all of our own machining. They're all done by craftsmen, so every step of the way, it's done when the craftsman says it's done, right? Mm -hmm. So this is our brand new, the 1150 GTO. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an upgrade to our current uh, 1100 mount. Um, the 1150 is kind of like uh, somewhere between the best of what the 1100 has to offer and what our Mach 2 uh, has to offer. So you can still buy this uh, without encoders. You know, it's a okay. fairly inexpensive uh, entry level. When you add absolute encoders, uh, the clutches are what we call sky aware, so you can loosen the clutches, move it around, and it will still know where it's pointing in the sky. So it's never lost. You can always home it. It's great for remote observing, unintended imaging. Uh, it's got a capacity now of about 125 pounds, so you can put a, a lot of uh, telescope on top of this. 
like I said, with absolute encoders, uh, the tracking is absolutely fantastic. I think it's somewhere around 0.19 now. We've improved it quite a bit. So 0.19 arc seconds is the kind of the native PE of that with the encoders. Uh, and we have through the mount cabling, and although you can't see it, it's got power, USB, and Ethernet now that you can run uh, through the mount in addition to your own cables if you want. So it's just a really nice solid upgrade to kind of what we've always thought of as our flagship uh, mount, the 1100. I know, I've seen too many scopes that look like weeping willows, all the cables coming off of them. <laughs> That's pretty rough. So, so it's nice to have that ability to do it. You know, whether people put everything up on top, or sometimes people put a lot of stuff on top and then run it down and have their mountain computer down below. But either way, it's going to work really nice. And you know, we're starting to see people moving towards Ethernet as a kind of a way to connect things. That's got that built in now. Uh, for something like this, I would say Ethernet is kind of the way to go. Now. Are the different axes on this thing, are they belt driven or gear driven or what is it? So for this design, so, so in the traditional ones, we run the um, gear, gear design, but these are actually doing belt. So it's actually incredibly quiet, uh, still maintaining the super accuracy, you know, thanks to uh, the encoders inside. And pretty much all aluminum, right? Except for the counterweights, obviously, right? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, so it's a combination of, you know, metals, we have various metal parts, uh, it's aluminum, but we machine this all ourselves, right? So we spec it all out, we put it together, as we mentioned, you know, every aspect of this is done by craftsmen, so they tell us when it's uh, met their standard, and uh, it's just a really, it's a beautiful piece of machinery, as you can see. Oh, oh, they are gorgeous. Now, do you guys also powder coat and anodize? We do all those things, yep, we have our own special color of things, we have a, you know, a nice... Uh, painted surface here. I'm not sure exactly what the color is, but it's kind of an off-white and uh, People hey, really I like white. Yeah, I like white. Yeah, and they're you know, so it's really beautiful it, This is an ATS pier, it's a third-party pier, but they get they've done a really nice job of matching things uh, to our mounts So if somebody has a mount from like 10 years ago the the colors are going to vary a very close mount match, right? Yeah, so so well we have you know, we have people who show up here They've had their mounts, you know, 20 30 years uh, possibly even longer uh, we did have black mounts for a while, like the Mach 1, some of the old 400s and 600s, but yeah, when we started moving to the, to the white color, people show up, you can barely even tell that they're uh, as old as they claim they are. So we've got a lot of folks, these are, these are typically mounts and telescopes that people will buy and keep their entire lives, and we, we just hear that over and over and over here at uh, Neef. I know, I really like white, because like, I've been in big domes with big scopes, and if it's black, I sometimes run into a black scope. <laughs> A little bit easier to see, yeah, you know. That can be a challenge. So, um, you know, people have their sort of personal opinions about. Well, we really like the white. We think it's a it's a nice way to look at it. Uh, you know, not only to, to use it, but actually to look at it and appreciate it. You know, and same with the telescopes. Do you get many guys using these for solar work? Uh, yeah, actually. So the stowaway, which is the one that's currently in production, it's a 92 uh, millimeter. Um, is extremely popular because it is very small, very lightweight, and just kind of the right focal length for doing uh, solar observing. And last year, as you know, we weren't here for the lunar, or sorry, the solar eclipse, the full eclipse, but a lot of folks were using their um, 110s, uh, using their stowaways. It's just that right exact uh, size of a, of a telescope for that type of work. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Dan, I think those are all the questions I have, but really interesting to hear about an American manufacturer and everything. Yeah, yeah, and, thank you. Uh, We're one of the last, one, last ones, but you know, you can find out more about us at astro-physics.com. Wait, and you guys do your own software too, right? We do write our own software. It's a whole, it's a whole other thing that goes into it, but yeah, the, the software is kind of like, how do you get the most out of the mount? Mm -hmm. And uh, very, very popular, very capable. All right. Thank you so much, Dan. Brian. Pleasure. <laughs>